you had something to say to your victim, what would you say? I would say that I'm sorry for what I've done. You do understand that you can't give back what you took, right? As far as innocence? Yes, ma'am. Just for the record, um, you had some pretty rough times in 2016 and 2019 while you were incarcerated. Um, I reviewed your disciplinary record. You had um, eight 21 write-ups during that time. Yes, ma'am. You might recognize him, and that's because we covered his 2021 hearing. Now, it has 146,000 views, so I'm not going to play the full hearing for you. I'll put the link in the description, and I'll play the end of the hearing before we jump into this new one. With that, let's go. Mr. Carter, is there anything that you'd like to say to the board before the board votes? Well, I would like to say, um, when I first got arrested, I, I felt disappointed in myself, but I realized the step that I had to take in order to stop feeling uh, disappointed was to own up to my actions and, uh, you know, seek forgiveness. But since I've been forgiven, I also um, look at me being in jail as a time for me to change my life around, you know, build a relationship with God, get to the Steve Hall program, leave it all, I don't uh, get a good time, I just want some help. And I like like when I was free, I never had a chance to go see a therapist or anything because I was too busy, you know, trying to work and pay my probation office and all and stuff. But I also would like to say that regardless of the situation that you guys make, that uh, I'm glad that you have a chance to be in front of y'all to, you know, express myself. So I just leave it up to God and I ask God to um, you know, sustain my steps like he said he would in the Bible. Thank you very much, Mr. Carter. Well said. Panel ready to vote? Yes, I'm ready. Ms. Weiss? All right. Uh, I, I'm, I actually, I'm glad that, that I, I got to meet you today. I, I believe you're going to be all right. I really I really believe you're going to be all right. But for me today, my vote isn't denied because I want you to complete the sex offender treatment program. You were just revoked in April 22. Uh, that's just insufficient time uh, served on that revocation for me. And you have a moderate risk and you have low enforcement outreach. But best wishes to you now. Thank you. Reapply when you're eligible. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Jackson. Okay, Ms. Durf, um, <clears throat> part of my vote would be grant conditionally on completion of the sex and treatment program since there is a possibility that um, you can complete that program in nine months. And you demonstrated to me that you um, matured a lot, that you recognized your own responsibility, and that was important for me. And you recognize your need to uh, make better choices. And I think you uh, are on the right path. And so my vote is a conditional grant upon completion of sex offender treatment. You caught her. Uh... You have uh, one vote to deny, one vote to grant, but I believe both of them are saying basically the same thing. You need to complete this sex offender treatment. Uh, you need a little yes, help, a little more time to do what you need to do. Uh, I likewise would grant uh, conditionally if you're completing the sex offender treatment program. I believe since your case is a sex offender, you, you need all three votes. So, uh, your, your uh, parole today has been denied, but we all agree that you need to continue that sex offender treatment program. And once you complete that program, reapply again, and it's probably likely you'll be granted on that occasion. So good luck to us. I want to thank all the staff there at Bozier for your help today. I uh, will be adjourned at 1035. All right, thank you. Now we're going to jump forward from 2021, the hearing that we just saw, up to May 2024, and it's going to be a new parole board. Do you think they're going to grant? Frankly, I was surprised that Miss Wise was the one that broke up the unanimous vote needed to give him a parole on condition of completing his programs. Again, I'll put a link to that full hearing in the description if you want to check it out before watching this hearing. With that, let's go. Okay.
Uh, you're 27 years old. You're a first felony offender. Your offense was forcible rape. You had 10 years hard labor, all but five years suspended, three years probation. I think this was revoked in 22. Is yes, that sir. correct? When your probation was revoked? Okay. And uh, you have a parole eligibility date, which just passed is 629-23. And you have a full term date of next year. So you, uh, December 28, 25, you would get out regardless. Um, do you understand everything I've said? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm gonna give it to Ms. Stapleton. Ms. Stapleton, would you ask him any questions? Yes, sir. I was noticing uh, on your um, report, do you have an approved employment and residence plan by your probation and parole officer? Yes, ma'am. What is it? My my uh, my job plan is JT's Pelly Yard. What is my, that? It's it's called JT's Pelly Yard Arthur's Test Pellets on Bellevue. Okay, Bellevue. And, and your parole, sir, probation officer knows about this and has approved it, or you just know? I, I sent the letter. I sent the letter out, but I wasn't verified. Wasn't uh, valid or not? Okay. All right. Well, it, it probably just needs to be updated. Okay. So your residence plan. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I also uh, have a residence plan. Oh. Okay. Now let me ask you something. Are you aware of the cost that you're going to uh, incur whenever you get out? I was just looking at the, the letter, okay? The very first month, you're going to owe $533, and that's on the low end for flyers and newspaper articles and different fees and to attend classes. And then after that, you're going to have a recurring bill of $143. So if you weren't to maintain employment, Mess you up, so you're sure about the job? Yes, ma'am. And you know about the fees? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, you had a revocation, and and uh, it looked like if you had just stayed the course within six months, you would have uh, um, been off of probation. What happened there? We had uh, your revocation. I was I, I was doing uh I was doing bad at times and I really didn't have the support that I needed. And, Thank you. And I, got, I really didn't like the circumstances of the house that I was living in, so I was trying to avoid that. And on my on the verge of buying me a, a new apartment, I really wasn't staying at the address that I was. Uh -huh. Circumstances I was living in. Um, do you plan on having any contact with your victim when you get out? No, ma'am. No? Okay. And if you had something to say to your victim, what would you say? I would say that I'm sorry for what I've done. You do understand that you can't give back what you took, right, as far as innocence? Yes, ma'am. Sex offender classes? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm sure you had them, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, that's the end of my questions. Well, what exactly was going on, Mr. Carter, in, in your life at that time? Well, at that time, by me having that charge, I felt like my, uh, my family was kind of pushed away from me, so I was like kind of struggling on my own. And it was hard for me to kind of, you know, give transportation for the job that I did have, and it was keeping me away from where I was supposed to be because I really didn't have the money to get back to that location that I was in. But when I, right before I got a revoked, I had a job, which is JT's failure, or that's closer to my house that I can really just walk to. Uh, I just want to note for the record that the judge is opposed, uh, Charles Jacobs, uh, district attorney, uh, Marvin Schuler is opposed. Uh, 
Chair Julian, Julian Whittington is opposed, and Chief Daniel Hagen of the Police Department is opposed. Unopposed is your mother, and she'll be speaking later. Um, did we get a victim impact statement? Yes. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, didn't get no victim impact. Okay, I have no further questions. I have no questions. I think everything was covered. I, I do know that you did complete the 12 month sequel program. I think that's where you're located now, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, just for the record, um, you had some pretty rough times in 2016 and 2019 while you were incarcerated. Um, I reviewed your disciplinary record. You had um, eight 21 write ups during that time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll hear now from uh, Perlinda James, your mother. Hello. Hey, Miss James, tell us what you want us to know about your son. Well, I just wanted to um say, because I was hearing all the people who were um opposed to him getting out. So I just, you know, I just want to say that we forgiven him and we still forgiven him. And, you know, I think he's doing better. He's matured a lot, you know, over the years. And um I'm just wishing and hoping he gets out and he does, you know, continues to do better and get on the right track and stay on the right track. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, Mr. Carter, is there anything you would like to tell the panel before we vote? Yes, I would like to say uh, I do understand that I have a past and I'm not proud of my past, but, you know, the Steve Hall program actually taught me to not live in denial anymore and own up to what I've done. And in these two years that I have been incarcerated, uh, you know, I do realize I did have a mental problem that I've been working on since I've been here. And, you know, I can't change the past, but I can, you know, create a, a better future for myself. You know, I asked God to forgive me. He forgave me. You know, my victim forgave me. Um, you know, I just ask that you all forgive me and give me a chance to start a new life as a better person. Because I have better myself and I just need another chance. Uh, all right, I guess the panel is ready to vote. Okay, Ms. Stapleton. Uh, I recommend denial based upon law enforcement opposition and the nature of the crime. <clears throat> um, Mr. Carter, you have a moderate risk assessment uh, according to our tool. You have the failed revocation. Um, failed uh, pro probation. Um, I think at this time, uh, I'm going to deny your request for parole. Thank you. And I concur with the recommendations of my counterparts due to uh, strong law enforcement opposition and past supervision history. My vote is to deny. Good luck to you, sir. You get out next year. Okay, that concludes uh, our business at Bolger. Thank y'all for accommodating. Again, I want to point out the hypocrisy of the DA. They leave a statement as to why they're opposed. So let me ask, why are you opposed if you initially gave him probation? That's what they gave this man who sexually assaulted his relative. They don't say what the level of his relative was, but he was 17 and she was seven. And this wasn't normal carnage knowledge of a juvenile. This was sexual assault of a seven-year-old girl. A relative. It could have been his cousin. It could have been his niece. It could have been his sister. We don't know. They don't say.
They gave him probation. How is that possible? It makes no sense. Then he violates his probation with three months left. If I remember correctly, is it six months or three months? I think it was it, either way. It was just a, 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 a little bit of more time. All he had to do is follow the rules. And he didn't. And then he's locked up. And while he's locked up, he has... What was the t- eight 21 write ups? Now, 21 write ups, that is 21 is a sex offense write up. Now, it has 21A, B, C, D, E, F. We don't know the class of it. Like, um, it, 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 the most common write ups that we see are, are, I think it's the 21Cs, which is just offender on offender um, uh, consensual, right? But I'll tell you, eight write-ups in that short period of time, that's a lot. We don't we don't see that, you know, that many write-ups, even for inmates that have been locked up for years and years and years. So it, you know, at least he didn't have a low risk score, right? Probably because he violated probation and because of those write-ups. Um it, it's it's you know, you just can't get over the fact that this is a little girl. You see the family that comes in and says, oh, yeah, the victim forgave her. her mom. No, no opposition whatsoever. Just think about that little girl. Um, you know, the board flat out denied him. And again, it's interesting to go back to Mrs. Wise. And I said 2021 hearing. I was wrong. It was it was. Um, I know they said he got denied probation 2023, but that can't be accurate either. But um, it, it, it was it it uh, I think it was 2022 hearing. So, but it um to think that if Miss Wise had had not declined uh, his his automatic approval upon completing the sex offense programs, he would have just been automatically paroled. And this new board didn't have any of it. Now, I would have liked the board to have said something on behalf of the, you know, they, they did. They said, what you took from her, she'll never get back. Um, and I guess there's only so much you can do. But just to think about this little baby girl uh, being, it, it's just, and then the DA gives probation, and then they're two-faced about it because they leave a, leave a statement now. Now, is it possible it's a different DA, maybe? If you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but frankly, I'm tired with giving the benefit of the doubt. I haven't been given reason to give benefit of the doubt um, to these DAs that it's a new DA versus the old one just trying to save face. But there you have it. There you have it. He's getting out anyways in a year. I don't know if there's anything that you've seen that would make you feel comfortable. Um they didn't talk about the crime. They didn't ask him what he was thinking. They didn't, you know, we we don't have any of that insight, what he was thinking. I don't know why they they, they just didn't do that. Uh, and he has all those 21 write-ups, um, which straight up, you know, it's concerning. And he didn't have the self-control or the discipline uh, while he was on probation in his best interest. It was his best interest. He would have been done with everything. And he couldn't, he didn't have the maturity to, you know, to just like follow the rules. Instead, he spent now all this time in prison. And how can you trust anyone that has missing those control, you know, valves to not go out and create another victim? What's the answer? Do you keep them locked up longer? I don't know. You tell me. But there you have it. And thank you, Richard, for providing the info with that. I'll let you go. Well, I, it's like a car wreck and you see total, total devastation. Uh, and everybody walks away and you think, okay, great. Everybody's okay. But then later on, they die from internal injuries that people couldn't see. Well, when you're a child and you're a victim of sexual molestation, you know, your total innocence was robbed and your trust in people that you thought was a trusted individual. Yes, and that's something that just doesn't sometimes never comes back. And that is the major cause of being the victim of a situation. 
I think a mic drop analogy by our new victim's advocate, Miss Stapleton. We're going to unpack this hearing at the end, and you may be as infuriated as I am with what I think is the hypocrisy of the DA. With that, let's jump in. 7 0 0 7 2 4 6 9. Okay. Um, Mr. Jarvis, I find you're a, a first class offender. You're currently serving a 20 year sentence um, for indecent behavior with a juvenile. Um, you actually were on uh, probation and you had multiple violations, including positive drug screens. Um, you have a parole eligibility date July 1st, 2024. You're not eligible for good time, and you have a full-time date of November 4th, 2037. Is that correct, uh, according to your understanding? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you're going you're gonna, to um, be answering Ms. Stapleton's questions first, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Jarvis. Um, You have a parole violation, and um, on it, you, you broke just about all the rules. You could. Um, tell me if I'm correct with this, okay? Um, you didn't keep your GPS um, monitor charged. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. I was working. Okay. Failure to stay at the list of residents, a positive drug scheme, failure to attend, sex offender uh, treatment, providing uh, falsified sex offender treatment attendance records. In addition, the subject did not pay the court ordered fine. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's what I was wondering. Um, so, you know, you're accused of, well, you've been convicted of indecent behavior. Um, with a juvenile, a young juvenile. So I don't, because you haven't had those classes, and I see here where um, I believe you wanted the classes. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And I Thank see you. here that you Can listed I something. Uh -huh. We have been taking some classes on, we have tablets here. And he has been taking some classes, but uh, I hadn't got all his certificates off, the, off of there. But as soon as I can get them off today, I will email them to you all. Has he finished sex offender classes? Yes, ma'am. He has done 280 some classes. He has 200 some 80 certificates in different things like uh, jobs, different kind of jobs, construction, uh, Truck driving and forklift and and some um sex uh, sex abuse uh, classes, sexual harassment, sexual harassment and stuff like that. But I could get them off and, and get y'all email and send y'all copies of them. Yeah, because it's going to take me a minute to get them off. Mr. Jarvis, do you feel like there's a lack of program there for a sex offender, like like a sex offender class? You yes, yes ma'am. So you did take those classes? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. What victim awareness? Do you understand what your what your victim may be feeling after something like this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, some people say, "Well, I, it's like a car wreck, and you see total total devastation, uh, and everybody walks away, and you think, okay, great." everybody's okay. But then later on, they die from internal injuries that people couldn't see. Well, when you're a child and you're a victim of sexual molestation, you know, your total innocence was robbed and your trust in people that you thought was a trusted individual. Yes, ma'am. And that's something that just doesn't, sometimes never comes back. And that is the major cause of being the victim of a sexual molestation. Um, I wanted to read here what the district attorney has to say. Um, they're opposed. You, you do have opposition from law enforcement and the district attorney. Um, the offender received the benefit of an extremely generous plea agreement, 
but cannot apply with the special conditions of his probation. We believe this is in in uh, this in indicative of how he would act if released on parole. Furthermore, we do not believe he has served near enough time for the trauma he inflicted upon his victim and the family. His sexual predator is where he needs to be. That's the district attorney's office. So I don't have any more questions. Mr. Freeman, do you have a question? Um, How's it, uh, your discipline? You have any disciplinary write up since you've been in jail? No, sir. Uh, write up free. Write up free. Okay. Commend you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious. I, I need to know how many children do you have, biological children do you have? I have four three girls and a boy. Three girls and a boy. Yeah. And how old is your youngest? My boy, he's 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 going to be five uh, next month. Next month on fifteen. Okay, so and you've been incarcerated for four years, four and a half years. Four, four and a half. You really haven't gotten a chance to know him yet. No, ma'am. But I like I have talked to him like on the wall phone. Like he's been hollering. He just started calling me daddy, and he's just starting to get to know me. But I never really had to be in this life. You know, to take care of him. And I'm, that's what I'm basically trying to get back to and support him and the family and my family. And take care of myself with the job that I, I have ability to, to get to have the work for. And your your victim was a stepdaughter, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. So I like what you're saying. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say? Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, Okay, by me being here, I had came here to this facility in 2019, and I just like you, you guys say, I never had any write ups. I've been write up free. I've been staying out of trouble. I don't get into no any type of bad environment, trouble, none of that. You know, I, I stay out, stay out the way, and I do anything just to get back to society to, to help my family. And I done lost a, a lot of family members since I've been down, and that took a lot of a lot of um, pain away from me, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I feel like I can get my people back together and by me getting back in their lives and my kids' life, my family, I can I can support them better and not let anyone down again, like coming back to jail. I mean, I, I can do better, I done did better, I am better, I done overcome what I had done in the past and I regret, and if the victim was here, I can. I would love to apologize for what happened in the past, and I would love to get back to society and better myself, way better than what I was of, of a man that I was supposed to be at first. Right. Um, Ms. Stapleton, do you? Would, are you prepared to vote? I am prepared. My vote is to deny. Based upon, you know, when you were off the last time. Yes. Um, participants. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My apologies. I have with us Miss Lanisha Karina. You are the mother of his son. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I am. Okay. And, um, what would you like to offer to this uh, decision making program? Possibly. I would like to add to the decision to the part where he's not a threat to society. Okay. He's been out of his son's life for like almost five years now. He's, my son's going on five years old. He had autism. He needs his dad. He always asking for his dad. His auntie right now can't be with us because she had open heart surgery and he helped out with his empty a lot and they really need him like they really need him his son need him the most he having no he have he have talked to his son but my son don't really know him like talking about how many children do they y'all have together we have one son together 
Was there anybody at the facility that would like to make a statement? Jones? No, ma'am. Okay. Is the daughter going to be around him when he comes to be with his son? No. She's moved? That's two different, uh, that's two different parents. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the confusion. I understand. Okay. So um, we have a vote by Ms. Stapleton for denial. Mr. Freeman? Um, you know, Mr. Jarvis, I think you're on the right track, but I think you do need to do a little bit more time than five years for the for the crime that was committed. So my vote today is going to be to deny. Mr. Jarvis, um, I concur. My, my biggest hang up is your revocation. I mean, you showed you failed to show any desire to follow the rules. And um, but you have impressed me with your disciplinary conduct while you're incarcerated. Um, that's to your credit. Um, I would hope that um, you would get some more programming in the area of sexual uh, victim awareness. So at this time, my vote is to not to deny. So you've been denied today, sir. Thank you. Please allow me to point out the hypocrisy, the two-faced nature of the DA in many cases, especially in this case. He leaves an, a letter, a pretty strong statement, right? And you might say, wow, that's refreshing. A DA that takes the time to write a statement. But let's not forget that it's the same DA, maybe not him specifically, but the same office that gave this man probation. It gave him probation. This crime happened in 2015. It wasn't until four years later that he violated his probation that he got locked up. And let's read through this crime, and it is going to piss you off. I can only read through parts of it because it lists an address. Even though it's a partial address, I eat with YouTube rules. I'm just going to have to, I'm going to go, I'm going to read the full thing, but I'm going to go away from the screen share. Thank you, Richard, for providing this. 28-year-old Baton Rouge man accused of repeatedly sexually assaulting an 11-year-old girl, his stepdaughter, during the span of a week was arrested Tuesday. Okay? This is the crime that he received probation for. The girl's mother called the police after walking into her living room Monday and finding her daughter partially clothed while Carlos was looking inside the refrigerator. Just grabbing a snack after the everyday sexual assault of an 11-year-old, his stepdaughter. The victim told police that when her mother entered the room, Jarvis moved away and opened the refrigerator door to act as if he were looking for something. The victim also told police that Jarvis had showed her several adult movies over the span of a week using a PlayStation 3, cell phone, and laptop computer. She also said that he sexually assaulted her. She uses the R word five times in the living room during that week. And the DA gave him probation. He did not have to serve one day in prison. The same DA that has the, as I said, hypocrisy to make sure to leave a statement. Is it because there's a new governor in town? Is it because they're finally taking victims, survivors seriously? I don't know. I don't know. But let's just keep that in mind. Let's not be fooled. Let's not be fooled. 
Police presented the girl with a photographic lineup of men with similar features, and she identified Jarvis as the accused. He was booked on first degree, the R word, and also indecent behavior with juvenile and sexual battery. And of course, what did they give him? They gave him the lesser charge of indecent behavior with the juvenile. Clowns. Clowns. They're a bunch of clowns. And then to have the audacity for his for his for, for for the mother of his child that he had while he was out on probation, mind you, who's autistic. And I know our mods and others in the chat have autistic children. But for him, and they may feel the same way about this, for 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 that to, for for he's probably not even gonna be allowed to be around his child. For her to come out and say he needs him, he needs him, really. You, you think your child needs to be around this person? Eleven years old. You know, I, I like the analogy that Miss Stapleton, who who I just you know the new victims advocate, and we got some some things we're going to show you about her. She is she's every bit as good. I mean, she's just. She's just wonderful. She's a true victim's advocate. It's what she's been doing with her entire, much of her life. Um, and we'll show you footage of her, uh, a courtesy of Brandy, our, 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 our Louisiana native, Cajun overcomer, who are familiar with her, um, sent us some great footage of her testifying next to Cajun overcomer, Brandy. But, you know, that, that analogy that she gave about the car accident, that was a great one. There's a wreck. People, you know, you think you survived, it's great, but then there are injuries that last forever. And she used that with the child, the victim, the 11 year old, who's who would only be, well, I guess because, I guess, um, I guess she'd be about 20 now or something, because he committed this crime in 2015. He got probation, he violated in 2019. He's been locked up for four years. So that's uh, nine years. He got a 20 year sentence. His full term dates 2037. Also strange with the prison. They're like, oh no, he's got tons of programs. He's got, he's got, uh, what was it? How many hundreds of hours of programs? And uh, I don't know. He's like, oh, he's got vocation programs. He's got this program. He's got that. Well, what about the sex offender programs? Anyways, I, I it just, I, I, maybe you feel the same way. It's just, it, it's, it's, uh, how does a DA give someone like this probation? It, it just makes no sense. And, um, you know, these parole hearings getting publicized, maybe it will start to change it. Maybe things will change. I am feeling good about this. Uh, it's a tougher on crime board and whatnot. But anyways. You probably wouldn't believe it if you didn't see it. And that's why we do this. So with that, I'll let you go. You're charged with sexual abuse of animals and pornography involving juveniles. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, you were sentenced to, to five years and six months on June the 21st of 2021. Uh, so that's just been three years ago. Right. Uh, you're sentenced to five years. You're uh, eligible for parole on September the 6th of 2024. And that's why you're requesting this parole hearing. Uh, yes. But you're full time. You're going to get out January of 2026 anyway. Um, so having said all of that, I want to turn it over to Mr. Freeman because he has some. Okay. Mr. Uh, you're back. I know you're in a parish jail, but yes, for us to consider you, you have to complete the four phases of sex offender class, uh, our, our program. So we're going to get them to move you to a institution where you can get that class and also uh, get a psyche valve. Okay. Okay. Is that, uh, I mean, that's what we need. We got, it. okay. Good right. luck. So we, so, so we'll deny today, 
uh, probably get you sent to Hunt to take your class. How long is the class? Uh, the class is four phases. You, you probably, I don't believe you're going to be able to finish it before you're going to get out. But Wait. we will check and see because you got one year left to do and you got four phases of sex offender class. Which there's been, there's been something, something's gotten boogered up because you should have. Yeah, they should have sent you. You should have been yeah. taking sex classes. Um, True. Yeah. It, it, yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll try get to get to the bottom quick. of that. But you need those classes before you can be released. So to conclude today, we need to go ahead. I assume and, I and have a formal yeah. vote. My vote is to deny uh, and get you sent to uh, to hunt or to another institution where they have sex offender treatment. And also, while you're there, uh, get a psychic out. Okay. My vote is also to deny based on um, your need for additional education. And I concur with them, and it's really just procedural because the law says that you got to have uh, you got to have uh, sexual of courses anyway before you be released, which is not too long down the road. So anyway, today was just a uh, just practice. Anyway, you're denied. You. And good luck. Is there anything I need to do? It's gone. I don't know if you need this anymore. Yeah. Okay, we'll take care of up here. We'll make all the recommendations and get you set where you need to be. Okay, and all is right. there anything I need to do for to have another hearing? Uh, after you finish the classes, you can uh, reapply. Okay, all right, thank you. Well, okay, that, that concludes all the hearings that we're going to hold today. And the time is 10.15 on the 18th of april 2024 uh we're dismissed cockroach you know this is madness we're gonna point out to the complete hypocrisy and insanity of the district attorney's office we're not gonna rage at the roach you know, we know the roaches exist. We see them all the time. This hearing, I am going to designate my rage to the district attorney. And frankly, it should go to the judge too for accepting this deal. We hear every story from district attorneys all day long. We don't want to prosecute cases against those who harm children. It, it would put too much stress on the child. We don't want to want to prosecute those who harm children. It, it's too much for the family. They've gone through too much. You don't know what a jury's gonna do. You know, they come up with many different stories, and and we played both sides. We played devil's advocate. There, there's something to be said about that. There certainly is. But they would never say the same thing if it was a homicide case. Would they say they don't want to put the child through more stress? They don't want to put the family through more. No, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care if the man who they just wouldn't care. All of that in this case is thrown completely aside. They don't need to put a child on the stand. They don't need to put anyone except the detectives on the stand. He was caught with over 450 counts of CP under the age of 13. We know for all of us who are aware of this stuff that that's quite up under the age of 13 wow that leaves not to mention the animal charges right not to mention the animal sexual abuse charges you can't make it up what would it have taken for the da and we'll show you this DA in a second. Oh, he 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 makes sure that he he's in the article talking about how how he locks him up. 
We'll go over his bio. We'll go over a recording of him railing against someone who might get out for homicide. But for this, he doesn't care. It's just a child. And you know he doesn't care because this is the this is the epitome of negligence. This is the epitome of not caring. This monster got a slap on the wrist sentence. He is young. He's under 40 years old. He's going to go out into the public and what do you think someone like this is going to do? He is a clear danger to every child and, dare I say, animal. You, you're you holding a royal flush, DA. These, Im, these are indisputable facts. Look at the investigation they have going down on the arrest. This wasn't... This was a multi-force investigation that caught him. They don't say anything. This is just like a neighbor filming it or something. It's all, you know, looks like a normal guy, right? That might be his truck in the driveway. It's a nice truck. He's got a nice house. He's the biggest risk. He's the biggest risk. And they're going to go cuff him up. And then they're going to go and they're going to say, hey, you know what? We have we have all the proof of what you've done. I mean, it's all the images. We've actually tracked you down. We've been watching you. And we're going to arrest you. But instead of throwing the book at you and hitting you for each count as the legislation allows it, no, we're just going to say, yeah, we don't want to go to trial. Let's, let's there they go. They're, they're cuffing him up. Good job. Good job. You imagine all the money and resources that were put into arresting him, into locking him up, only for them to do not to, to do absolutely nothing with it. How can you justify that? He was taken into custody after law enforcement spent hours at a home in Ascension Parish Thursday, was booked on child foreign charges. Law enforcement officers were first spotted outside the home. Um, and Thursday morning in Louisiana Bureau of Investigation, which is part of the Attorney General's office, said it arrived around 8.15 a.m. and agents announced there for um, remain there for hours. According to jail records, he was 34 when he was booked on, on CP, on juveniles, and crime against nature. He has been seen taking away handcuffs shortly before 11 a.m. They said that he was charged with 450. 50 counts of possession of CP involving juveniles under the age of 13, 60 counts sexual abuse of an animal. That means he's actually sexually abusing an animal. Think about that. Isn't that a federal offense now? I, I thought that was a federal offense now. Could, couldn't the feds have come in and gotten him on this? This arrest was a result of joint investigation in the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation Cybercrime Unit, Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office, and the Louisiana State Home State Police and Homeland Security Investigations, Federal Bureau of Investigation. I mean, the, the amount of money that probably went into doing this, it's got to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, once it all adds up. And they give them five years. The investigation was initiated following a tip from the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children says the attorney's office. Then we go to our our district attorney, right? Not the ADA. This is the actual district attorney. An accession man is heading to prison after pleading guilty to multiple sex crimes. Police arrested Christopher, who's 35, um, on hundreds of charges involving CP and animal sexual abuse. He was sentenced to five years and six months. District attorney Ricky Babin said Friday, the arrest came in July 2020. Uh, after they got his or oh, the DA is so proud of himself. Let's see this wonderful DA, this really brilliant guy. So um, he graduated in 1985 from LSU University, earning his degree, continued da da da. Okay, he practiced civil law beginning in 1992 and began his practice in criminal court. 
um, as a, a criminal defense attorney in 23rd District. In 1995, he joined the 23rd District Attorney's Office prosecuting sex offenses. Well, I like how he puts that as his first. Okay, that makes us feel real safe here, right? We feel real secure. That's what you were prosecuting. Drug cases and handling civil litigation. In 2002, he was appointed the first district attorney and he served in that capacity through 2008. In the fall of 2008, he was elected to his first term as district attorney and was sworn in in 2009. I would love for his constituencies to see that this is how he... Now, look what he says here. This is what they care about. A combined residency of upwards of 170,000 people. The office handles approximately 3,500 felonies and 24,000 misdemeanors annually. And that is an insane number. 3,500. You just do the multiplier and they, you know, it's impossible to prosecute all of them. But this is a case where you're holding all the cards. Let him go to court. He's not going to win. There's forensic evidence and proof of what he's done. So this excuse about going to court does not exist in this case. And you cannot have a conscience to give such a small sentence, in my opinion. He secured his second term in office, an unopposed candidate. Wow, that's reassuring. Unopposed. Here he is. Here he is. Let's, um, here he is ranting about homicide getting out. And what's interesting is that we actually covered these cases, uh, these parole hearings. And as far as I recall, and Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, this DA did not show up to those hearings to contest um, these, these inmates getting out. No, instead he just takes an interview so he can brag, you know, show the public as if he does care, but he doesn't show up to the actual hearings, as far as I recall. This is just too are the ones that's on my desk. There. District attorney Ricky Babin is trying to wrap his brain around something that he says makes absolutely no sense. Damn it, life in prison is life in prison. Over the past 30 days, he's had two lifers come up for parole. The parole board denied Lucas Roddy's parole this month. But now another convict could get out of prison. These pictures are from a gruesome 1986 murder in Gonzales. A lady who was a waitress was leaving a restaurant late at night. A lady who was a waitress was leaving a restaurant late at night, uh, had car trouble. Uh, the guy who's supposedly going to help her jump her car off uh, brutally beat her to death with a with a tire tool. Right to Babin's surprise, he was notified the killer, Derek Perkins, is up for parole next month. It's all part of a years-long effort to reform the criminal justice system. In a matter of months, he could be walking out of prison. And uh, it's just it's just hard for the victims to, to relive this. We saw it happen last August. Investigators found their bodies. David Chenevere, now 64 years old, convicted of and confessed to the grisly murders of Evelyn McIntyre and Michael Brown more than 40 years ago in Baton Rouge. Come with me, son. He pleaded guilty and got a life sentence. He was released from prison after being granted parole. Our own John Pastorek, one of the first reporters on the scene following the murders. Back in those days in 1979, bodies found in a dumpster. They've been stabbed multiple times. That just doesn't happen in Baton Rouge. Babin says what's happening requires change. If somebody's going to get life imprisonment and it's not really life, then the victims and the public in general should be told. Babin says district attorneys around the state are also pushing for a truth in sentencing bill that would let victims know the exact minimum amount of years a convict could face when they're given their sentences. My Truth in sentencing, right? Hey, I agree. That is a good that is a good bill. But how can you go to sleep at night knowing that all you did is kick the ball down the road for a handful of years for a monster? I just don't get it. You know, maybe you're just so burnt out as a DA that you just don't care anymore but that means that what you're saying is that you just don't care about children or animals anymore but you'll make sure that you get up you have the film crew come in the whole production about how you're yelling about you know it's unfair that people are getting out 
And maybe it's what because the family of the victims or because it was a big news story, he felt like doing that, right? That's just my opinion. I, I don't know how you can get around it. Here's a legislation that he was able, his office was able, was able to prosecute on. Whoever commits the offense of sexual abuse of an animal shall not be fined more than $2,000 or imprisoned with or without hard labor for not more than five years or both. So just for the animal charge, one charge, he could have gotten a maximum of five years. And we know that there were how many charges again? There were 60 counts, 60 counts of what he did to his animal. And I bet you they had that proof because it was probably on video. <laughs> so that's a life sentence right there. And then for the children, um, whoever intentionally possesses CP, okay, this is possessing CP involving juveniles, shall be fined not more than $50,000 and shall be in prison or hard labor for not less than five or more than 20 years. So just on one count of CP, he could have gotten a 20-year sentence. This is what the legislation allows. Yet his total sentence was five years and six months. Remember, he had over 450 counts of CP. He make it make sense. I have always, you know, out of any charge, this is the charge that is the most simple to throw the book at. It's the most simple to prosecute. I cannot understand how he can put up any defense. None. You literally have five organizations in law enforcement that were involved in this case. It was a joint effort by the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation Cyber Crime Unit, the Accession Parish Sheriff's Office, the State Police, and Homeland Security Bureau of Investigation. If you are saying that you cannot prosecute this to the fullest, then you are calling those organizations incompetent. How can you put all of the human resources, the financial costs, the mental disturbance that all those people have to go through just to review the evidence? They have to watch that stuff. They have to look at those photos. Forget the actual victims of crime. What, you, what message are you sending anyone? I just don't get it. I think most of us don't get it. And when you just take a step back, you say, you know, like, I think, again, the only thing that might ever make change for this is, is having, you know, a proper judge sitting there that understands it and says to the DA, no, 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 I'm not allowing, I'm not allowing this plea deal. We're going to trial, which we've seen from a few of our favorite judges or I suppose just the public continuing to see these hearings and continuing to show outrage and eventually causing change, change within the DA. You know, that's where the pressure has to come from because we can't rely on, uh, on a few people to protect our children, even though really everyone did their job except the DA and the judge in this case. Anyways, thank you, Richard, for pointing out this hearing as always. And with that, I'll let you go. <laughs>